Hi there. In this topic, we're going to look at grouping data. So let's jump right in with an example. So suppose I have a data for 20 students who took a maths test and their score out of 20 is listed below. And I'm asked to put it into a frequency table. Now we could go and use a tally chart, um, except a tally chart you'll see is really not going to be all that efficient. So if you have a look here, we end up with something like this, and then I'd have to fill all of this information in. It just seems rather convoluted and complicated, and you know, I I, I like to be able to um, see things quite simply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the data instead. So if I group the data because I have lots of it, it's going to be far more convenient and our table will look something like this. Now it's much, much easier to tally up the data. So anyone between zero and five marks, I'm gonna tally up here. So we got one, two, three. So tally of three, frequency of three. Uh, between six and 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm counting six there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And work your way through all of the data, tallying up where necessary. And you end up with something like this. So it's far more convenient to group the data so I can clearly see the information. Right, we can do the same thing with continuous data. So before we were dealing with discrete data, because these all took specific values, these were all marks that were specific values here i'm going to use some continuous data because we're dealing with height it's measured um, and i'm going to group it in a similar fashion now just one thing to watch out for is your class intervals these things are called class intervals let me just write that down class intervals and it clearly states here that this class interval is between 13.5 centimeters up as far but not including 14 so if it's exactly 14 it must go into this class interval here so just be aware of that and it's done in the exact same manner so 13.5 to 14 let's go through our table here so we got one two three four I'm counting four there, one, two, three, four. And as I said before, just notice that I didn't include 14 in this class interval because it says here less than 14, which means it does not include. It can go up as far as 13.9999999, but will never ever include 14. 14 goes in here. So between 14 and 14.5, one, two, three, four, five, counting five for that one. So one, two, three, four, five. And again, working your way through all of the data, putting it into our grouped frequency table. So when you've done that, you should end up with something like this. Right, time for you to have a go. So we've got a couple of questions here for you to do. So if you've printed off the sheet, see if you can fill in the frequency tables correctly. Okay, hopefully you've managed to have a go at that. Um, here's your solution, so you can mark off your work, see if you managed it, no problem. As I said, the most um, common mistake here is people will include 140 in the wrong class interval. So just make sure that you do include it in the correct class interval. Be wary of that. That's all from me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you again sometime. Take it easy.